Hello everyone, it is the Prophet Michael David, aka Aries, and uh, I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Although I know for sure there are a lot of people in the world that are not right now, which uh, brings me to my first point. Okay, so this video is called Combo because it's going to be a little bit what you guys call religion, uh, including prayer, what I call God stuff, and then some geometry too because that's what I've been working on lately. I do realize it's been six days since I last posted. Uh, I've been pretty much engrossed in uh, number theory at the moment. All right, to start out, uh, prayer. Um, if you've seen my past videos, uh, I was never very religious growing up. My family was not because we were evil, just because we did sports and stuff on the weekends. But, and I never prayed, not since I was probably 16 years old. But, um, let's see, around April 15th, so around four days after my friend, my ex-girlfriend Angie died, uh, April 5th, April 11th, 2022, um, for some strange reason, um, I knew that I had the Axis Mundi. Again, you guys can look that up. It's the center of the world where God personally resides, both God and the angel of the Lord. And I figured, you know, why not? I would pray to Gaia, the creator, not the angel of the Lord, uh, but I prayed to uh, God that, uh, you know, that Angie was a good woman. I loved her very much. And uh, I hope that uh, Azrael would judge her fairly. And um, that's what I prayed for. And then, like, almost literally the next few days, the Ukraine war started. Or maybe it started before she died, and I just didn't think of it. But um, I didn't pray for Angie anymore because I already made that prayer. But I decided to pray, you know, that the, the war would end. And then the next day after that, there was some mass shootings. So then I started praying for the Ukraine war to end and then the mass shootings to stop. And then I saw all these people crying and stuff about people, uh, you know, their kids dying. I think in one, uh, I don't know which shooting it was, maybe the Texas one. I'm not sure. But then I started praying for the Ukraine war to end, um, stop the mass shootings and to help out, you know, the victims and the families of the victims because they get traumatized for life during that stuff too. And then after other bad stuff started popping up, I would pray for those things for a short time. Not that it's not important, but like when that, um, that D back for the Buffalo bills had that heart attack here in Cincinnati, I prayed for him until he came out of the coma and I was happy about that when, and then, about six months ago, there was that huge earthquake in Turkey that killed a, and hurt a lot of people. So I prayed for them for a couple of weeks until, you know, the effort was much more on the way. Again, not that it's not important, but otherwise my prayers would be like a rosary every single day. And then, you know, in the recent past, had the uh, earthquake in uh, Morocco same thing like the one in turkey killed and hurt a whole lot of people so i prayed for them yesterday and then i was at breakfast this morning or having coffee and i saw all the flooding in libya so tomorrow i'm gonna pray for them so i'm not bragging about this i'm just saying it's like a substantial part of my life okay now from the sad prayer stuff to the uh, awesome sacred geometry stuff. So I haven't posted for six days because I've been engrossed in this prime number stuff with my spreadsheets because uh, I'm chasing the Riemann hypothesis. So I'm going to kind of explain to you guys, do an overview again of what I've been doing, how I've been doing it, and uh, why I think it's so interesting and how you could you know, do this stuff too very, very easily, even if I won't tell you my secret equations uh, so far. I will, but I'll do it in about a month. Yes, I called it Holy Grail. Uh, as you can see, there's uh, 40 spreadsheets because I did from prime, the first prime, which is prime two, to the 283,147th prime, which is whatever prime is right below 4 million. So it's not the first 4 million primes, it's the primes from 2 to 4 million, which is about 300,000. 
Why am I doing this? Uh, because I'm trying to solve the Re Riemann hypothesis by creating the best prime number theory ever. And in some of the, the screenshots that I'll show you, you will see um, B, P, N, T, E as a label on some of my lines. And all that stands for is best prime number theory ever. Okay, now you'd be asking yourself, what is the current prime number theory or the best model for the prime number theory? And that's this. Okay, just remember, as we talked about before, that symbol that looks like pi is not, that's not pi. That's not 3.14 something, something, something. Um, what that is, whenever you see that symbol attached to stuff like that, and this is straight, that screenshot is straight from wiki, uh, just think PCF, prime counting function. And all that means, as we talked about before, is prime counting function, then you put in some prime, and then it kicks out a number that is that, it's that number prime. So if it kicks out, if you type in 10 or 11, it kicks out 5 because 11 is the fifth prime. And also, as we talked about before, that li, that's lie of x, that's the logarithmic integral of x. That's calculus. And it's useful, and it's the best approximation of pi in the world. Um, and it's used for all sorts of boundary conditions, and you can look it up on um, Wiki and everything if you want to do some personal research. But the problem with it is it's continuous. It's calculus. It's not discrete mathematics. It's not plug and play. All my stuff is discrete. It's plug and play. It's algebra. So now you're asking, how are the prime counting function and the logarithmic integral related? And that's this. Okay, just a bit of clarification. Um, both of those graphs are related to the prime counting function because remember, the prime counting function is just that little step thing. It's not actually an equation. But the upper bounds, the one on top, and that's what you think about it, that's the, the normal one, the n, n log of n. That's how I do it. And the bottom one, though, the relationship, that's the, um, the lie, the logarithmic integral. So in one way, you can think of the upper bound as a discrete function, plug and play, and the lower bound is a continuous function, calculus. What I'm saying is my, I also have an upper bound and a lower bound, but both of mine are discrete, plug and play, just algebra, and both of them are much better than even uh, the logarithmic integral. Although looking at that, you wouldn't think that anything is as good as a logarithmic integral. Just one more really small note. The way that's presented, and I'm gonna show work that's presented much like that, is how I would describe it is decay. The numbers are decaying to one. But I will also show you the inverse of that, where it's using slope, where I call that growth, where it's basically the, the slope of the ratio between the magnitude of the primes and its corresponding nth prime number uh, eventually goes to infinity, although it goes to infinity very slowly. For example, here is one of my growth graphs from um, prime magnitude 975,000 to prime magnitude 1 million. And here is its corresponding decay graph. The decay graph is so much cooler, and that's how that first one was presented. But again, that one's like zooming out almost to, not to infinity, but out 10 to the 24th away, so everything looks like it's the same. Where I'm, because I'm doing line segments of the numbers, uh, mine's like zooming in as much as you can at all times. That's why I said in one of my previous videos that I kind of turned the uh, prime numbers into a, a song. I just need to find the right strings and tune them up. And if you're asking if I'm going to like put all the slides together like I did that one day, yes, I am. It just takes a substantial amount of time to do all the screenshots and put these videos together. And again, I'm just by myself. I don't have any other production help. So now you're probably asking yourself, how are you going to use this technique to prove the Riemann hypothesis? Well, like this.
All right, number one, that's straight from Wiki. Number two, in layman's terms, all that's saying is that if the Riemann hypothesis is true, then it implies that the logarithmic integral can never get too far away from the primes. It's always bounded, which means without even calculating the logarithmic integral or using it in my equations, which I don't feel like doing right now, I can use that equation to create bounds in my style on both my growth graphs and my decay, decay graphs. So that is a growth graph of mine using this technique. And you can see it has the primes, the upper bounds, the lower bounds, and then it has that a plus b, that's my upper bound equation. But you can't see the gold because the blue from the primes covers it up. It's that close. And I'm sorry, I do not have a corresponding decay graph to show you for a couple reasons. Uh, I haven't done it yet is the first, um, but that's only because I'm trying to incorporate some other ideas into it to make it even better. Because that's obviously the best graph to show the true nature of the prime numbers, just them dipping and diving and uh, weaving around. You, you know, you're really, it's, you're trying to uh, herd chaos. Most It would probably make most people insane, but I love it. All right, we're getting really close to 12 minutes, so I'm gonna be signing off here pretty soon. But if you got into this part of the video, you can see what my argument is going to be. If the Riemann hypothesis is true, then lie of x always has to fall within those bounds. But if you can make any equation that always falls within those bounds, then by like the tacit logical process, you would solve the Riemann hypothesis. All right, signing off. Uh, as always, rule number one, uh, do not touch each other without other people's consent, AKA do not hurt each other. Rule number two, it's all about honesty. Lies are ticked down. And uh, you know, if you're a prayer, maybe even if you're not a prayer, maybe throw out a few prayers for all the people who are getting screwed over by uh, natural disasters right now because they could use them.